Today I want to show you something I found on a maintenance here. Um, it's just doing a regular maintenance and I notice my pressure is a little bit off here. Um, pressures and uh, temperatures here. You can notice we got a really low suction line, low super heat. Um, temp splits about 12 degrees, that's kind of low. My airflow is good. I went through all that, checked all the airflow. Everything's good with that. So, um, basically, I've run into this problem before, and this is going to be an issue with um, an oversized orifice, oversized meeting device. So, this unit is it's a train unit, but they're using um, it's designed to use a TXV, but the core they're using is um, they're using pistons. So. A lot of times guys they don't use the sleeves with them with the pistons for that for the coils so essentially pretty certain that's what we're getting here you notice we got really high suction pressure um, low head pressure basically zero sub cooling zero super heat but essentially there's no sub there's no super heat to sub cool so yeah this is a pretty pretty telltale sign of um an oversized orifice. What I'm going to do is I'll pump the system down real quick and go ahead and uh, try to get that metering device swapped out. And you always want to make sure you um, check your airflow, make sure you got your filters are clean, your airflow is good. But like I said, the reason why we know that it's not airflow as well is because oops, it's got such a high suction pressure. Usually low airflow would result in a lower uh, heat load over the coil, which would basically give us a lower suction pressure. So instead of 50, 50 um, degree suction, suction saturation, we'd see like probably like 30, below 30, something like that. Um, so, yeah. Alright, so we're up at the air handler now, and uh, it's basically, this is how the kits come, they got various different sizes, and the sleeve here, so what I've noticed, some, I've been, I've been on um, units before that just didn't have a proper, they just weren't cooling right, really low temp splits, and I've just seen where they just put these pistons in without the sleeve itself. And sometimes they don't size them right. See, they've got different size. That's 063. Um, so it'll show you the size, the piston size here. 58058. Five, Let's go ahead and crack it open and see what we get here. Oh, we got the pressure, mostly release. That wasn't tight at all. Either. That's crazy. Yeah, that sucker was leaking. <laughs> Look at that oil weird. You see how loose that was? So we got very minimal pressure on there. The only reason I kept a little pressure on there is because I want it to be um, I want it to be um, open to atmosphere as little, little less time as possible. So you do you take this here sleeve you get some of that oil as well pull that up and it shows in the manual sometimes you know guys just don't like using the manual doing installs but i'll show you the manual after i'm done with this
So essentially we'll take a look and see what we got here. Put this down because I don't want to see if we can get the piss notes in there. So we have Wasn't expecting that. We got a sleeve with no piston. Let me make sure it's not in here. Nope. Nothing. Let's just go ahead and drop the piston in there. That's weird. So yeah, they sleeved it without a piston. I just put a 058 in there as the um, coil calls calls for. Kind of hard to believe. Yeah, whatever. Guess they figured that sleeve was a decent metering metering device. Let's tighten that back up. And they literally had this hand tight, which is unreal to me. So, this should be good there. Put a quick vacuum on it. If they would have chosen any one of these, any of them would have done better than what that sleeve was doing. I mean, look at the size of the orifice on the sleeve. That's what they were working with compared to, you know, if they even would have gone a bit bigger for the 6.5, you know. So, it's just one of those things, you know, live and learn. Started. I was a pressure check it, sorry, and then back and I'll be right back. Alright, so got the um pressure test of nitrogen. Just gonna get the vacuum on here real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna go ahead and drop about a pound in. I already know it's under charge. Feeling good about that vacuum. And I'm going to release the charge. Into the system here. What the hell, man? It's 
So they stripped the hell out of that thing. Son of a gun. I hope I'm able to get that out of there. Man, I hope I'm able to get that out of there. Some of these guys, man, some of these install guys are something else. Oh, thank you. One of the cool thing I wanted to show you guys as well. If you ever don't have a service wrench on you, let me tell you what works really well. If you got one of these multi wrenches. Uh, multi screwdrivers. Check this out. Joker fits very well. It's probably a little quicker too. This one's really solid. It's definitely quicker. And this will, you can always get an out using a standard Allen. I'm not so sure the size, but an Allen wrench will work fine for the liquid line. But it'd be hard to find an Allen wrench that size. So, that's something I uh, stumbled across in the field when I was in need. It's like they say necessity is the mother of invention. Alright, that's it. See, it's the same diameter and everything. Works real well. So yeah, if you've got a like a 9-in-1 on you, it's definitely the ticket. If you don't have a service wrench. Let me go ahead and um, get this thing fired up. Okay, so these are my old pressures. 49 degree suction, 79 degree head. And we have um, 1 degree superheat, 0 subcooling. Temp split 12. I'm gonna go ahead and do now is clear our old pressures out. So, let's see, it's still low in the refrigerant. So basically we can't can't charge by subcooling because this is a piston. So what I want to do is do piston fix metering. We've got 10 degrees subcooling. Um, temp split still in 7.1. 37 degrees super So we're really low. Let's go ahead and add a little more protein. So we're looking good. We're getting there. I'm going to run for about 10 minutes or so. But you can see the difference. I mean, now that we've got the proper metering device, all of our pressures are basically almost locking right into where they need to be. It's only been running for about 10 minutes. Um, about two and a half pounds in total. You haven't looked at it for another five minutes or so before I drop any more refrigerant in. It might stabilize, it might be good now. So, so our indoor pressures, and I mean our indoor temperatures are looking a lot better now. We've got a 72 degree uh, dry bulb. Uh, returns 58, 
AC 59 degrees, uh, humidity on the return. Wet bulb is 62. Supply temperature 58. Supply relative humidity 81. And the wet bulb is 54, base of 55. So, we'll take a look now at our pressures. I mean, they're a lot better. Probably slightly overcharged. Um, probably want our superheat to be a little bit more around 8, eight degrees. Telling us our target based off of our wet bulb and outdoor dry bulb is 10, 10 degree target. So, um, sub cooling, 19 degrees sub cooling, open line. So, either way, the pressure is still a thousand times better than they were um, upon arrival here. So, I'm going to take a little bit of charge out of this thing and uh, basically get it tuned in right. And look at that. The system may be overcharged. I mean, it's not rocket science or anything, but I just love this magic quick how, um, you know, it's just right on the money lot most of the time. That's pretty much it, though. That was just a quick video on um, basically what a oversized metering, the oversized orifice looks like on a metering device. So next time you come across some weird pressures, I mean, first obviously check filters, you know, your fan speeds, things like that. But um, if your suction pressure is high and you've got low suction temperature, suction line temperature, and superheat, it's um pretty good chance you might have a issue going on with overheating you know, the coil so yeah that's just a quick one today so we'll catch you on the next one all right thanks thanks for watching